from the doorway of her shelter, have so watched the clouds go by. They made pretty shapes in the sky. My name is Yasmin Ola. I am a Rohingya human rights activist. I'm also a poet and a writer. Um, I recently finished writing um, the book called Tafsa and the Magical Ring. Um, it is a children's book. And the premise of the book is that um, Hafsa um, and her brother and her mother now lives in the camps, uh, the largest refugee camps in the world. You know, they were the refugees who uh, fled uh, from the violence in 2017. And she now have to reconcile living in, um, you know, the refugee camps and missing home, uh, missing the traditions of weaving, which is a very collective and communal sort of activity and so she was just I think recounting the stories and and the and the things that she missed um to her brother and her mom sort of help in in the storytelling as well and that's basically the entirety of it I think it's really really important to tell the story of what the people now have to encounter um in the camps uh, without resources or living you know in the dire circumstance at a micro level like what happens to people's lives and I, I really hope that it come across and you know it it, uh, it is a children's book so I hope that the younger demographic get a chance to actually look at this issue in a less traumatizing sense but also get an understanding of what a refugee's life would look like encountering a genocide. It's not entirely my story. Uh, I was raised by a single mother for, for the most part and I have a younger brother um, and we, you know, we fled when I was very, very young. So that that part was very much, you know, out of my life. There's uh, several parts of the Rohingya culture that I have never witnessed or forgotten about because I left at such a young age. Hafsa, our main character, is making sense of the story, making sense of what she's now missing, family members that she now no longer has the ability to to see or meet that's just another way of her basically basically processing her grief it is also me trying to reconnect with part of that roots that i i don't know if i will have the ability to to go back and reconnect with in a way i'm trying to preserve that part of our culture that very few people have talked about so far and just to basically tell the world there is something like this that exists and I think it's really beautiful I just really hope that people look at the Rohingya people in general and see more sides to us than just being victims being people who are in need of help but creators inventors you know as as well not just not just as the other one the other um you know very very common narrative that you see out there but really as people who are sufficient and and sustainable and, and people who weave and help each other, um, a collective society. I don't know how to explain to you if, if you know, a lot of the stories are similar, but the, the part that it stopped being similar is that, um, you know, a part that we, we basically lived in the refugee camps. And the rest of it was just, you know, recounting the stories um, that really never happened to me. But it's, it's the part that I really want to highlight the most, which is, you know, the storytelling and, and oral history um, as part of our culture. Vroom, vroom! Her little brother, Hafiz, was playing a few steps away. Stay close to the shelter, Hafsa reminded him. 